Mi Zhu and Mi Fang, featuring Lady Mi and Shi Ran. Being born into an extremely wealthy merchant family, the two Mi brothers were military generals, politicians, and the in-laws of Liu Bei, as their sister went on to marry him. They were essential to Liu Bei during his early struggles as they financed his army at critical moments when there was no tax base. Shi Ren, also known as Fu Shi Ren, was only an official who was subordinate to Guan Yu. Following a dispute, he and Mi Fang defected over to Sun Chuan when Lu Meng invaded Jing, which then led to the death and defeat of Guan. Mi Zhu loyally served and accompanied Liu Bei as a high civil official for over 25 years, from Zhu to Jing to Yi province. He is thought of by some to be Liu Bei's best friend and most favoured subject, whereas his younger brother was noted by Raf de Krepny as having the remarkable record of serving each of the leaders of the Three Kingdoms. Chen Shu appraises Mi Zhu, Sun Qian, Jian Yong and Yi Ji as refined and cultured persons whose ideas were widely circulated. They were well known for their good observation of the proprieties. Mi Zhu was the eldest of his siblings, and they were all from Donghai Commandery. Zhu and Fang were said to be proficient in horsemanship and archery, and their clan had over 10,000 slaves and guests. Aside from his brother and sister, Mi Zhu also had a son and a grandson who reached reasonable military ranks. The Mi family were known to be talented with the arts of archery and horse riding, hence they were all excellent riders and archers. Mi Zhu was extremely well educated, and also helped Liu develop relationships with other wealthy individuals, such as Yuan Shao, Yuan Shu, and Liu Biao. Legendary tales of Mi Zhu say he was once returning home from Luoyang when he met a lady on the road. He kindly gave her a lift, and on the way she spoke up, and revealed that she was sent from heaven on a mission to burn down his house. However, to repay his kindness, she allowed Mi Zhu to evacuate it first. A huge fire indeed broke out at noon, as the lady promised. The Mi clan initially served under Dao Xian, alongside the prosperous Chen Gui and Chen Deng, who headed the Chen clan. When Dao Xian passed away in 194, the Mi clan strongly advocated that Liu Bei takes over as the governor of Zhu province. They joined his side, and also used their influence to help their new lord. Years later, they were amongst Liu Bei's army, which marched south to counter Yuan Shu. Their armies faced off, but it resulted in a month-long stalemate. Liu Bei's family was captured when Liu Bu attacked Zhu province's capital ZRP in response to Zhang Fei killing Tao Bao. Liu Bei faced tough times here, but Mi Zhu and Mi Fang, whose family members were also captured, stayed loyal to him. The soldiers started to desert as they marched back to ZRP, and those that remained were soon defeated by Ji Ling. Liu then led his men to Donghai Commandery, where he was faced with enemies on both sides and a dire lack of supplies. The Mi brothers supported Liu Bei and offered Lady Mi to become his principal wife. They also used their personal wealth to help pay for the army, but it wasn't enough. The soldiers resorted to cannibalism in the end, so Liu Bei sent an envoy of surrender to Liu Bu. He returned Liu Bei's family to him in an act of good faith, which presumably caused some domestic complications, as Lady Mi is never mentioned again. Liu Bei's family was captured numerous times to come, but as Lady Mi was never highlighted as one might expect if she were alive, she probably died earlier, around 197. Although information on her life is scarce, she is heroically depicted in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, when she sacrifices her life to aid the safety of Liu Shan and Xiao Yun during the Battle of Changban. When he returned to Lu Bu, Liu was stationed at Xiao Pei, where the Mi brothers continued to financially support him. Over 10,000 men were gathered, which made Lu Bu suspicious. When he inevitably attacked, Li Bei fled west and went to serve under Tao Tao, along with the Mi clan. Tao tried to entice the Mi brothers by offering them governorships over Ying and Pengchang commanderies, titles which they turned down. His memorial to Mi Zhu reads, The prefecture of Tai Shan has wide borders, which makes it hard to control. Moreover, it is since long infected by many bandits and brigands. Looking at the situation, it should be divided into five counties known as Ying, and have one known to be pure and incorruptible to defend and adjure it. The supporting general Mi Zhu is naturally faithful and loyal, and is reliable to command military and civil affairs. Hence I request to have him take office as Ying Prefecture Administrator, to comfort the officials and people. They joined Liu Bei when he left Tao Tao, giving up their chance at high positions for an unknown future. Liu Bei fled south and sought refugee under Liu Biao, and chose Mi Zhu first to go and discuss the issue with him. He was promoted for his efforts in soothing the relationship between them, and after the Battle of Qi Bi, Mi Fang was assigned to administrate over Nan Commandery. When Liu conquered Yi, 
Mi Fang remained behind with Guan Yu, whilst Mi Zhu was promoted again to the general who pacifies Han. Military manoeuvre was not Mi Zhu's expertise, however, so he was not given any troops to command, but this didn't prevent him from being one of the most highly esteemed among Liu Bei subjects. Serving as a role model in Shu Han for younger officials to look up to, in the same way they did to Zhu Ge Liang, Fa Zheng, Dong He, and Zhu Jing. In 219, Lu Meng's invasion of Jing got underway. Guan Yu marched north, leaving Mi Fang in charge of defense of Xiang Ling, with Xi Ren stationed at Gong'an County. As Mi Fang had earlier accidentally set fire to supplies, Guan Yu threatened to dish out harsh punishments should he emerge victorious over Tao Tao. This made Mi Fang feel uneasy, which Sun Quan capitalized on by sending him letters. Bonding over the fact that they are both brothers-in-law to Liu, Sun Quan expressed his outrage towards Guan Yu. When Lu Meng's forces started capturing bases and commanderies in southern Jing, Mi Fang heeded Xi Ren's advice and surrendered over to Sun Quan. When Mi Zhu heard of this, he bound himself up and presented himself to Liu Bei as guilty of his brother's crimes. Liu consoled him and told him that the fault of her brother shouldn't reach another, then continued to treat him the same as before. Mi Zhu was so deeply filled with shame though that he soon fell sick and died just over a year later. Yang Zi of Shu ridiculed and detested Mi Fang for his betrayal, and he was treated the same by Yu Fan of Wu for the very same reason. Mi Fang's boat once met with Yu Fan's in a narrow waterway. Fang's servants demanded the other boat to move out the way of their general's boat, as they shouted, so Yu Fan angrily replied, how can one serve the lord when he's lost his loyalty, and how can one be called a general when he caused his master to lose two cities? Mi Fang was so ashamed that he let Yu Fan's boat pass instead. A similar anecdote has the two meet at Mi Fang's camp, whose gates were closed. How can one do this when what is supposed to be open is closed, but what is supposed to be closed was open? Mi Fang felt even more shame than he did at the waterway, but despite the ridicule, Sun Quan still treated him with trust and dignity. In 223, Jin Song defected over to Wei from Wu, so Sun Quan sent Mi Fang under her Shi to suppress their rebellion. Serving as a commander, Mi Fang fought alongside Li Yu Shao of Wu and Xian Yu Dan, where they succeeded in their mission. Jin Zong was captured alive and Qi Shun was retaken. Mi Fang is not mentioned again in historical records. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.